I'm Courtney. So you've gotten diagnosed with CIDP probably. Uh, I'm just going to share these six uh, treatment options that are available for CIDP that are covered. Some of them covered by insurance, others not. And just kind of a few things about what you need to about, know about each one, in my opinion, with my experience. And I've spoken to lots of people that are in the CIDP Guillain-Barre community. So this is based on not just my experience as, um, as well as others are included. Okay, so the six treatment options that are available is IVIG, uh, steroids or prednisone, uh, plasma exchange or plasmapheresis, HSCT, which is a stem cell transplant, uh, stem cell therapy, which is just a kind of a regenerative stem cell medication, um, and then also chemo. So those are the six, and I'll kind of talk about them in that order. So the first line of defense is IVIG, which is a great medication. It's all it is, is antibodies from donated human plasma. Uh, the kind I take, which is Gamunex C, is mixed with, I believe, water and dextrose, which is kind of like a sugar or a binder. Um, so it's, it's a great medication. The only real downfall is it can be hard on your kidneys as it's funneling through your blood. And then some people do not respond very well to it. They have maybe an allergic reaction or some kind of reaction. So that it can be spaced out over a few days or do smaller doses more often. Or some people do sub-Q, so it's injected under the skin. I've not done that, but that seems to be uh, tolerated a little bit easier. Uh, the other thing that some, they, a neurologist may start you off with or try first is steroids or prednisone. Um, but most doctors and most patients aren't a huge fan of prednisone because of the side effects. But um, I've spoken to some people and they just like to just have a few you know, steroids on hand just for like on days they feel weaker, they'll take a few. I've taken prednisone before. I didn't feel better. It didn't stop my flare up. So I'm not a huge fan myself, but again, some people love it. I did do an IV of steroids when I was in the hospital, but I will, I, that was uh, right after I did plasma exchange or plasmapheresis. So what you need to know about IVIG is two things in particular. One of them is, and this is something a neurologist won't tell you, and, and it's because it's really, it doesn't make any sense, but I can tell you from personal experience and also the experience of other people with CIDP that are living, breathing, you know, living it, is that the brand of IVIG actually matters. So, and I don't, I really don't know why that is. And, and there's not necessarily one brand that's better than all the other ones. It just seems like some of us respond better to some IVIG better than others. I use Gammon XC. I know Gammon XC is a really good brand. Uh, Privagen is what you're gonna find in most hospitals. It has to do with um, how they can mix it up and it has like a better storage situation or something. But Privagen's awesome too. I've, I've heard nothing but good things about Privagen. I can tell you that I did Octagam and I, it, it did nothing for me. It was crazy the difference between Octagam and Privagen. I don't know. So that was my experience. A friend of mine, with multifocal motor neuropathy, which is a form of CIDP. He also does better on the Gaming XC and he had to fight to fight to all hell to try to get them to give him the Gaming X instead of another brand, but the other brand he was just deteriorating. And I don't know the name of that one, but it doesn't matter. It's just different ones are gonna affect you maybe a little differently. So if you're not having success with one, maybe try another. You're, again, your neurologist probably won't understand that because it won't make sense from a medical standpoint, but again, um, it's something to try if yours isn't working or yours stops working, maybe you can change. Um, the other thing about IVIG is I, I've read statistics, but I can tell you just based on people I've spoken to and being in the CIDP community that IVIG only works for about 65 to 75% of people at first as a medication on its own. Uh, the other 35% of us, that's one in three people, uh, it, the IVIG just doesn't work and that sucks. And there, there's a few things. There's, um, I don't know the name of it, something you can ask your neurologist about, but there's a, I think it's an antibody they can test for. And if you test positive for that antibody, then that means the IVIG will not work for you. And the next line of defense is rituximab. I actually tested negative for that antibody, but IVIG still didn't work for me. Like on, on paper, 
I was still a candidate for IVIG, but it didn't, it didn't work for me. And a part of that is just like, doctors are doing the best that they can, but there's still just a lot to CIDP and the human body and illness, chronic illness in general, that we don't understand and science hasn't figured out. So there are, they figured out the one antibody that is present in some people that will, will tell your doctor, hey, IVIG is not gonna work for them, they need rituximab. But there's still other antibodies and there's still other things that are undiscovered that, that make it to where, you know, IVIG might not work. So the next, after IVIG and steroids don't work, which I, not, I, I would say most people wouldn't recommend steroids if you can avoid them, but if that's all that works for you, that's all that works for you. Or if it works in your lifestyle, then great. Like if you're traveling gypsy and you can't always be in the same place to get your IVIG, then throw some steroids in your bag. That's what I did when I went to Spain. Uh, okay, but the next the next line of defense is plasma exchange or plasmapheresis, and that is where they you they usually hook you up to a central line, which is put through your neck, your jugular, uh, or if you have really like rock star veins, they can put one in one arm and another one in the other to funnel your blood in and out. Um, so it, it takes your blood and it puts it through a, a machine, kind of like dialysis, and it separates your red blood cells from your plasma and then throws your plasma, your crazy plasma in the trash and pairs your red blood cells back together with synthetic plasma and puts it back in your body. Um, most likely, if you get to the point of needing plasma exchange, you will be admitted into the hospital so that they can do about five rounds of plasma exchange uh, over the course of about eight days. Uh, for me, they did plasma exchange three days in a row and then skipped a day, did one, skipped a day, did one. And then that was followed by an IV of steroids and then um, followed by five days of, well, five days of ster IV of steroids and immunoglobulin IVIG. Because after you get plasma exchange, you want the IVIG immediately after so that you have some healthy antibodies in your blood so you have an immune system. Because the plasma exchange is what it's doing. Your immune system is in your plasma and your immune system is attacking you. So they're getting that plasma out and throwing it away so that those antibodies are not in your bloodstream to be able to continue attacking. You're going to see um, the quickest improvements, I think, from plasma exchange because it's getting the, the, the antibodies out of there. Like you should, you know, almost get immediate relief, but they say that most people start to see a benefit of plasma exchange after the third treatment. Most people. I will tell you that uh, not only did IVIG not work for me at first, but um, the plasma exchange, you know, they say that most people see some kind of improvement because the inflammation is, is taken out of your body. So they see some kind of immediate improvement after the third one on day three. I can tell you that I didn't see benefit from plasma exchange until day 17 after my first one. So I had a very delayed response. That, that can be for a lot of reasons, but uh, your myelin sheath, uh, your body's really good at repairing your myelin sheath, but that can take, like, if you have, like, significant damage like I did, which I, I was paralyzed in the neck down at the, at the time I was getting plasma exchange, my myelin was so damaged, I think that it took two weeks for, or over two weeks for my body to even repair a patch of the myelin enough for me to even see a difference. So, anyways, that, that's plasma exchange. Um, what I want to say between the IVIG and the plasma exchange, and this is really, really important to me because I don't want what happened with me to happen to somebody else. So please take this to heart. Um, so the most neurologists, they want to start you out with the IVIG. The way insurance works in the United States is that you have to show that the first treatment option isn't working to be able to get a second treatment option approved. And the typical time for that is three months. For me, I got the first round of plasma exchange through the Mayo Clinic out of Arizona, and I just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And I was walking at the time I got the plasma exchange. My arms were not working, but I, I was walking not well. And over the, that three-month time, I went from walking to not being able to move anything from the neck down. And in that three-month time, I knew that the next form of treatment was plasma exchange. So I knew that was the next thing I needed to try. I also knew that IVIG, like something, like at least I shouldn't be getting worse. And so I would say to somebody that if you 
got IVIG and you're not seeing it, I would, the, the amount of time it takes for IVIG to show some improvement for most people is anywhere between two and seven days. That's majority, that's common. For me, it seems about, I see uh, improvements about five days later, but I've seen some people say it takes two days, other people can take up to seven. So if, if you're not feeling a little better after seven days or at least stabilized, like not getting worse, if you're still getting worse after seven days, I would say that's a red flag and not for every single person. What, what happened with me is I reached back out to the Mayo Clinic and I said, this isn't working. I'm still getting worse. And they said, well, give it time, give it time. It can take up to three months for the plasma exchange to work. And I just kept declining, declining, declining. And in that three month time, uh, that's when I got drop foot. So had I started out with plasma exchange or gotten it sooner, I probably wouldn't have drop foot now. So it is a critical time. Uh, anytime your, your nerves are going through nerve damage, it's critical time. It's like, um, you know, within a, within a matter of days or weeks, you can have something happen. You can get axon loss and that you may spend the rest of your life trying to fix that. So it, it is really important, to, you know, there is a sense of urgency. And if your doctor or neurologist doesn't have a sense of urgency with you, then you probably need to find another option. I also know that from experience. Um, I would suggest going to a major hospital, not because there are not super competent, amazing neurologists, like the, the local neurologists around the corner, but because places like the Mayo Clinic or UT Southwestern here in Texas, they just can get things approved through insurance quicker. And they have access to better you know, more, more available testing. So it's just, you can get through the process of getting a diagnosis or getting the right treatment quicker in the beginning. And then if you wanna to go to the, the neurologist you love around the corner to, for continued care, great. But until you're getting better, I would say go to the place that can get you on the right track the quickest, which is going to be a major hospital. They just have better resources. I'm telling you from experience. Okay, all that said, so if IVIG, you're not, you're not at least, if it doesn't at least slow down or stop the decline or the progression of your weakness or tingling or nerve pain, then start lobby, lobbying immediately for plasma exchange. And don't be afraid of it, plasma exchange. I was afraid of it. It's not, it's not a big deal. But um, I would say immediately, like, push as hard as you can. Like, don't, because the standard protocol is for the neurologist to give you three months before they can reapply to insurance. That's the easy route as far as paperwork is concerned. But it's not that easy route for the patient. Like if you're not getting better after a week, it's not the easy route for you. So just just push. If they, if they can show on paperwork that you're continuing to decline or um, that up, you know, that maybe you're in a more critical, like you're having trouble breathing would be an example. Like if your lungs are starting to be affected, there's ways for them to prove to insurance that you need that emergency plasma exchange. So just push for it, really do it. Okay, after plasma exchange or another uh, treatment option that you can do instead of plasma exchange if IVIG is not getting the job done, um, or you can even start with this. Some people just have really, really great results with, with rituximab or rituxin. And that is a chemo technically, but it's an isolated chemo. I have had no side effects. Some people do, some people can have pretty hardcore reactions. That's why it's done as an outpatient procedure and can't be done in your house so that you can be like in a, in a facility with nurses and all that jazz, all that jazz. Uh, IVIG can be done at your home or outpatient. So uh, rituximab, that is where the, the medication, it's, it's an IV, it takes about five hours. Um, if you tolerate it well. And it goes in and it kills your CD19 protein, which is attached to your B cells, B as in boy. And your B cells are the part of your immune system in your plasma that produce antibodies. And the antibodies are the things that go and flag your peripheral nervous system, in the case of CIDP, uh, for getting killed, getting torn up, getting, you know, it's you're telling your body that, that there's, you know, foreign invaders in your peripheral nervous system that need to be gone. So by killing the B cells, the rituximab, you can no longer produce the antibodies, so you can no longer attack your nervous system. So that's that's great. Um, I've seen, I've heard of rituximab putting people in remission after two years. That's that's cool. 
I haven't had rituximab in a year, so that's awesome. But it's not the kind of chemo where you're gonna like lose your hair or anything like that. So my neurologist prefers rituximab because over plasma exchange, because they work very similar. Plasma exchange takes it out of your body, whereas rituximab kills it and then your body eliminates it. But it works kind of in the same way of just getting rid of your B cells uh, completely. Uh, so it's different than IVIG in the way that works. That's why some people respond to it when they didn't respond to IVIG. Um, my neurologist likes rituximab better because there's lower risk of infection, um, uh, whereas the plasma exchange has a higher risk. But different neurologists have different opinions about that. And you may not have a different opinion about that. You may just want to get the plasma exchange or not get chemo in your arm. I mean, uh, yeah, so is rituximab, rituximab safe? I mean, it's not as safe as IVIG. Uh, but to quote, to quote one of my good guy friends that sells, he's in pharmaceutical sales. I told him I was getting rituximab and he was like, oh, okay. He's like, that one doesn't screw people up as much as all the other ones. So I thought, well, that's good. Um, okay. Uh, the, the next line of defense after rituximab, like if you have a very severe case of CIDP and like the plasma exchange is just, you know, one of my friends that has CIDP in Colorado, they were, he had to have plasma exchange like once every other week or maybe once a week just to survive, just so that he could keep breathing. I mean, it was just like a keeping him going kind of a thing. But, uh, when HSCT came, came around, which is a stem cell transplant, he did that and he still has to have some medication, but he's actually improving now. He's getting better. He's not just hanging on by a thread using plasma exchange to survive. Uh, the HSCT has actually gotten him in a, in a, he can walk now. Like he still has to paint. He's an artist. He still paints using paintbrushes in his mouth and he can't use his hands so well, but he's at least out of a wheelchair walking and and still getting stronger. I think it's been four years since he had stem cell transplant and he's still seeing improvements to this day. So that's really exciting. Uh, HSCT has a 97% success rate. At least that's the, the percentage that came out of the study done out of Chicago of getting people, stopping CIDP in its tracks and getting people better. So that's amazing. It's 80% for multiple cirrhosis, but anyways. Uh, there's there is a place in Mexico and a place in Russia that are reputable. Um, it costs about fifty thousand dollars to do it in those places. It was, it did cost a hundred, about a hundred thousand dollars to do it in Chicago, but after Dr. Burt's study was done, uh, you needed to do it for ten years. Some insurance will pay for it now, as of last year. Um, so they were doing it in Chicago, and then there's a place in Denver that will do it as well. Today is April 21st, 2020, and to my knowledge, uh, Dr. Burt's Clinic in Chicago is not taking any new patients. So, but I believe Denver still is, although the wait list is really, really long. But I know Medicare will cover it now. Um, and then I think Blue Cross Blue Shield might as well, and some other ones. Um, so that's worth looking into. I didn't do that. Um, I'm glad it's available. It's just, the way it works is they give you chemo. They do give you rituximab, but they give you other chemo as well, where their goal is to kill everything in your bone marrow, completely kill your immune system so that they can take your harvested stem cells, put them back in your body and you can regrow a brand new immune system. Super, super duper cool. But you do lose all your hair. I mean, you do have to be in isolation for 20 days when you're doing the chemo. Your organs do put, your organs do go through all of that, that harsh chemo and it doesn't feel very, very good. And I know that the recovery from that can have some ups and downs for six months to a year that can be intense for some people, others not as much. Um, but yeah, I'm really glad it's available. So one day if I do need to do it, I can. But uh, right now I seem to be in remission without doing it. So uh, that's that's super awesome. But, but everyone I've talked to that's done it just raved about it and says that it was the best decision they made and their CIDP recovery and highly, highly recommends it. So that's an option there. If you do want to do that, I would suggest immediately, like even if you're considering it, just go ahead and start the process of applying because the wait list is, if they're even taking new patients, they may be so full right now in Denver, but at least get it, get the ball rolling. They even have wait lists in, in Mexico and Russia at times. So you can always cancel up. I tell everyone when they're dealing with chronic illness, it's like you can always cancel an appointment or postpone it, but you can't always get one whenever you get in that situation where you got really stressed out and have a really bad relapse or whatever. 
it's like, or you realize that IVIG is not working anymore, or plasma exchange didn't work, at least you have that appointment on the books or you have it rolling so that you have that appointment if you need it. You can always cancel, but just get it rolling. I just think that's super, super important. Okay. Um, the next treatment option is stem cell therapy. Now this is not covered by insurance yet. They are doing studies. I know for at least multiple cirrhosis in New York City, they are getting the ball rolling so that eventually, you know, this can be covered by insurance, but right now it's not. And stem cell therapy is, does not have this high 97 success rate that a stem cell transplant does, but it also doesn't have all the, uh, the high risk factors. It's a regenerative medicine, meaning uh, it, it only can really help you. And there's some conflicting opinions there too, and I'm sure there's things that we don't understand, but the MSC umbilical cord stem cells uh, used for stem cell therapy, there's, you can use, that's the ones I use, but there, there's a few different other ones that you can use. You can use your own, but that's a different video of which way to go with that. I went to a place in Panama called, um, the website for it is Cell Medicine, C-E-L-L medicine.com. Uh, that's Dr. Ray Orden. He is from South Lake, Texas, and he moved his practice down there because not because it's dangerous or they don't know what they're doing or it's in a foreign country like it that, you know, so what are they doing? It's because it just hasn't been around long enough and there hasn't been enough studies done in the United States for the United States to make it legal yet, which is why they're doing things like in New York City and, and getting the studies. But just at this time, it's not. Texas did approve small doses like you can get injections yeah but what i'm talking about is the systemic ivs in texas i know that you can get one cc through an iv um that's about five million cells but the mega dose that they do down in panama is 120 million over the course of three or four days so that is not that is not allowed to do here in the united states yet and they picked 120 million cells they've tried 200 million they've tried 50 million, you know, they, they found that the 120 million is kind of the sweet spot for the highest success rates. They say about 75% of people down there in the clinic in Panama uh, do see some type of improvement. Uh, I don't, I went and got it done. It's $23,000. I don't know if I saw improvement. It's been uh, about five months since I got it done, but I'm sure it did something and I'm still really glad I did it because I have to know five years from now that I did everything I possibly could, you know, for myself to help me get better. And who knows, maybe the stem cell therapy went in there and fixed my thyroid that was about to go wacko. Like, I don't know, but I'm still glad I did it and it is regenerative. And um, yeah, so Dr. Ray Orden from South Lake, Texas, he's also, if you get on YouTube, you can look up his um, interview with Joe Rogan. And Mel Gibson, because Mel Gibson took his dad down there and had really good results. Tony Robbins has been to this clinic. It's, it's again, it's very reputable. So it, I tell people, if you if you haven't gotten a diagnosis yet, that, and you're having some neurological symptoms or chronic illness, and you don't know what it is, I would say, I would just go down to Panama because it'll either do nothing for you or it will help you. The MSC umbilical cord stem cells are blank cells, so they do not have any, D, any DNA attached to them. And they don't work, well, really no stem cells work in the way that people first thought, which is like that they go in and turn into a nerve or they turn into an organ. That's not really how they work, or at least not how these work. The stem cells go in and um, reduce inflammation. They increase growth factors and regenerative properties in your own body, um, making it a good environment for your body to heal itself. Um, I even read how the stem cells can go in and where one cell is really weak and not functioning really well and doesn't have a very good mitochondria situation, the stem cells will kind of like lend their mitochondria to make that cell start functioning better. So that's kind of like how they how they work. They're just like helping your own body heal. Um, okay, so that's stem cell therapy, regenerative. Um, the last thing that may be offered or brought up as a treatment option for CIDP is uh, chemo. And this is the least, you know, I, I don't, I don't hear of this very often. And it's kind of thrown at patients when IVIG, plasma exchange, rituximab, and all of that stuff doesn't work. And it's just kind of like a Hail Mary, I think. I, I have heard of it helping some, but 